What's going on, guys? This is the Full Stack Bro. You see, I'm dressed for the gym, about to get my chest, tries, and shoulders workout in. You know what I'm saying? Always got to stay healthy and active, man. I just do this video real quick, um, just to kind of talk about web tutorials, because um, I know as a developer, or if you're trying to learn how to code, there's a lot of tutorials out there that could teach you how to uh, learn a particular language. And sometimes, it depends like the quality of the tutorial might be good as a beginner i'm not saying that it's that you shouldn't do web tutorials i think web tutorials are a great resource a great free resource if you're trying to learn how to code but the biggest thing is you know the the amount of time that you have to spend on that tutorial learning with someone and making sure that they're teaching you the right things and as a beginner you're not going to know that um, firsthand. And this is great, honestly, because what you learn in one tutorial versus another, there might be some conflicting uh, viewpoints on like how you should go about structuring your code and how you should go about solving the problem. Um, it's up to you to kind of figure out what route you want to go. But this allows you to think a little bit more out the box, right? Uh, at least for me, when it comes to web tutorials, I think, you know, I've used web tutorials uh, a lot uh, to get me to where I am today. And there's nothing wrong with the web tutorial, but then after a while, after you go through so many of them, you realize that it's kind of all the same thing. It's all the same concepts. And there's different ways of styling a website versus like the methodologies of, you know, how to structure your code, how things should be built out. And then you realize, okay, well, you know, I have my own style of writing code and it seems to be more efficient. So I'm going to go that route. Um, if you're trying to brush it up on, on a couple things, go with the web tutorial. OK, but. As a beginner, definitely go that route. It's cool, but there's definitely some drawbacks to it. OK, when you're looking at a web tutorial and you're going through it with one person, Usually all that code is already done and then you're just, they're just copying and pasting the code there or just writing it out so that it just shows that they know what they're doing. Okay. Essentially. And in this case, like you follow along and you do the same thing. What developers would do or what teams will do, especially with the startup, they'll write out the features as fast as they can, just so that it's out there and it helps the teams that need it. Right. Or the customers or users that's going to be using the app. What happens later is that as you go months without touching that component and now you have to add more features and belt and nice bells and whistles to it, you're going to notice that, you know, what you wrote previously is not the most efficient. If you look at that as a problem, that means that you've gotten better at writing code. In that regard, I would say having that mindset, it takes time to develop. Um, and just going through multiple tutorials, I mean, you could adapt to that, but not necessarily will you uh, notice the first time, like when you're going through web tutorials and you're just gonna get lost in the sauce. You're gonna conflate a lot of different concepts that you already started to learn and you're gonna get overwhelmed with the amount of different ways to code something. You're gonna have to start working on real projects. And that's the only way to get better. What you could do is invest in a coding bootcamp. It doesn't hurt to invest in a coding bootcamp. A coding bootcamp is the way to go, hands down. In computer science, like if you're in school and you're trying to graduate with a computer science degree, it depends. Like things have changed so much to where it's not necessarily needed to have a CS degree now. Um, you could learn everything online. If you want to go to college and spend all that money, great, but you could take that shortcut doing a boot camp and, you know, get in a job right out the door. And usually what they, what these boot camps will do is they will set you up with a job opportunity once you finish the boot camp, once you get your certification and all that. And once you land the job, you will have to pay them back for that, for that service. And they'll take money out of your paycheck. Um, you know, every two weeks or, you know, whatever your, your pay cycle is, and that will pay out your bootcamp uh, dues. But if you don't want to do that route, then I would just suggest with as many projects as you can, 
always like after you finish a project months later, go back and refactor it, make it better, add new features to it. Think outside the box. Once you have that mindset of, okay, these are the different use cases that wasn't brought up in this web tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the functionality by doing X, Y, Z. And you could create a list of what you want to do and just knock that out for each project that you're working on. And then that's going to show, especially when you go on these interviews that you upkept on the development of that project and you just didn't leave it stale out there for like a year or so. But just uh, just having something that's already out there on your GitHub account that you already built out, that's out there on the web, that a recruiter or someone that's looking for someone to fill a role for the language that you're learning, they're gonna be able to find you and reach out to see if you're open to opportunities. And then you're gonna get on these interviews, you're gonna be super confident because you already did the work. You already put the time and the effort into learning and, being bec and becoming proficient in that language. That tech stack that you picked is gonna be easy for you to just kind of rattle off all the key concepts on these interviews. And, and just having that confidence to where you could speak and you could just really sell yourself to be that guy or girl that is going to bring value, right? Because you've done the work. It's going to help you get opportunities in the long run, right? So, you know, like I said, web tutorials, hands down, as a beginner, great thing to do. As you start to become more acclimate to the, the languages that you're learning, you might have to pivot a little bit, okay? You might have to do other things to where you would enhance their capabilities a bit so that you could get opportunities and you don't have to go searching for them. Also, when you're looking at these tutorials, just make sure that the instructor knows what they're talking about and they're just not copying and pasting from a previous project that they already did to where you're not understanding what's going on and they're going and they're going really fast. So always think outside the box when it comes to these tutorials and you will do fine. OK, that's it, guys. That's the video. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Let me know how web tutorials have helped you. And I'm here as a resource for you guys and I want to see you succeed. So thanks for watching and talk to you guys. soon.